Alright, in this video we're going to look at the circle menu animation, something similar to what you see over here. This is the request that I got from a viewer a very long time ago. I'm still playing catch up on all the tutorial requests, but something remotely similar to this. Now, this is all done in KOWP, so here's our little middle button. I press it. There's our four icons. I'm using four instead of five because these animations require clipping. We have to clip some things. And it's easier to clip uh, vertical and horizontal pieces instead of trying to clip at certain angles. So I'm going to press the home icon here. And there's our animation. Everything kind of resets back when I do this as well. Notice how some of these things are changing. My menu is open. No, that's a list global. Go is home. Well, if I press this now, it's going to set go to none because technically go is going to be either be home, search, settings, or location. For example, here's location. So notice go is location, menu is open, it's not because it closes whenever I press one of those icons. And then again, when I press this center button again, go becomes none because I don't want to see any of these circles animating until I press one, for example, settings here. So now go is settings, menu is open, no, whereas it was before I pressed the icon. Now my main goal for this tutorial is to show you how to make that circular ring. But you can pick this preset up for free in my free wallpapers folder. Look for circle menu animation in the free wallpapers folder. There's a lot going on here, but when you pick up this preset, there's a few things we can adjust, and I want to show that to you real quick. This dir here is how fast these icons pop out, so I can make them pop out really fast or really slow. With a dir of one, that's like one tenth of a second, these are going to pop out instantaneously, as you can see there. The ring duration is how fast the rings rotate when we animate those. So if I want those rings to be faster, I can bump that time down. We can move the icons farther out, or we can move them in. Something to note here, if you start messing around with these, sometimes you may see lines around here. And if you do that, let me try to show you that real quick. I'm going to unlock this ICO size. That's the size of the circle. Say if I bump my ICO size up to maybe 101 and I'm going to bump the move. Let's see if I can get those lines to show. See how we got two lines right there? Let's save that and see if that's showing on the home screen. You can barely see them. It's like one little tiny pixel of lines there. A way to fix that is go in there and adjust that move or that ICO size to make it go away. And now you can see we have four lines showing up. So a way to get rid of those again is to adjust that move or that ICO size. So playing around with those numbers, somewhere around 500 for move and ICO size of 100, it does make them all go away. Why does it do this? I think it has something to do with the math that's going on. It's only showing literally like, like a pixel, one pixel of lines, and those clips aren't clipping everything like it should be. I don't have a definite answer as to why. Just play around with those numbers, and you can get those lines to go away. But now when we look at this animation, they pop out really fast, and these rings should be a lot faster as well. Now, if I come and bump the dir, this is how fast those icons pop out. They're going to pop out slower, and I'm going to make the ring duration quite a bit longer because I want you to see how involved this really is. So the icons are going to take a second to pop out. It's going to take five seconds for the ring to go around a complete circle. This is going to be a lot slower. Even the center button here is going to animate slower. So notice they did pop out quite a bit slower. This little button here was slower as well. Now let's watch the ring. What's going to happen here is that this clip, we have a half circle slice over here that's getting clipped by a shape on this side. So if the half circle slice is over here, but the clip is over here, we cannot see this circle slice. But when we press home, this circle slice is going to rotate into the clip so you can see it. And then I have another clip over here that's going to make this side come over here. That does not make sense. That's what I'm going to show you in this video, though. And then I have a complex animation applied to this to make it fade out and disappear as well. So pick up this preset for free in my free wallpapers folder. Again, it's called Circle Menu Animation. Let me show you how to make this ring, which is one small part of this entire preset. So I'm going to use a blank preset for this. Let's add a circle slice for shape and let's put it in the center of the screen. 
So here's my circle slice. We definitely want to do some adjustments to this. I have it in the center of the screen. I have its width set to 500, its height set to 100, and the preset that you can get for free in my free wallpapers folder, I actually have number globals tied to all of these things. Now, I want this circle slice to be 180 degrees, and this is going to be the circle slice that's going to animate and show over here. So now I'm gonna take this rotation piece, not the angle, but the rotation, I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. Now we have the half circle slice over here on this side. Now what we want to do is we want to create another shape, a square or something big enough to where, you know, we can pretty much cover this whole thing, but we want to put this shape over here and then we're going to clip it so that we cannot see this unless this white circle slice here comes over here into this region. To do that, I'm going to add a square. I'm going to call this square clip. I'm actually going to call it right clip since I'm going to put it over here on the right side of the screen. This square, let's make it big enough so that it's going to uh, be able to cover this entire height. So somewhere around maybe 600 should work. And again, number globals are very beneficial here, but I'm giving you the basic setup. Let's position this in the center of the screen. And now what we want to do is we want to slide this square over half to where this square, this left side is going to be right in the center of the screen. To do that, take whatever size we have here, 600, divide it by two, and let's move it 300 to the right. Now, the left side of the square is directly in the center of the screen. Now, let's back out of here. Let's take this right clip and put it above in our layers list, which technically moves it behind the shape, but it doesn't really matter here. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to take this right clip and I'm going to clip the next module, which is going to clip this circle slice. This is going to make the circle slice disappear because this is just half a circle. None of it is showing over here in this square. And the only way we can make it show is if we animate this circle slice into this region. So check this out. Right clip, FX, mask, clip next module. Notice everything disappeared. The square disappeared because it's becoming a clip. So that shape will always go away. The half circle slice went away because that is the next module we have. And the only way we're gonna be able to see this is if we rotate it or move it into that square region. To show you that quickly, if I come to that circle slice and I just go and bump it over to the right some, you're gonna start seeing it show up. See what I'm saying? But I'm gonna put that back at zero because I don't want it showing right now. I'm gonna go over to globals. I'm gonna add an on off switch and I'm gonna call it go. And this is gonna be a basic on off switch. We trigger it, when we cut the switch on, it's gonna animate, and when the switch is off, I'm actually going to reset the animation. That way we don't have to reverse the animation here. I'm also gonna add a button, find icon, and I'm gonna let this star, when we touch the star, we're going to toggle that global switch go. So when we press this button, we're gonna to toggle that switch on and off, and I'm gonna to come to that circle slice that we can't see. It's really sitting right here, but we can't see it because it's not inside of the clipped region. Go to its animation. I'm going to react on a formula, even though we technically could react on a, the global switch. And the reason why I'm picking formula is because I want this thing to reset. I don't want it to go backwards. Now, if you just want it to go back and forth, you could do react on global switch. So for the formula, if gvgo is equal to one, that means if the switch is on, I want to move it forward. Otherwise, I want to reset it. So by me using this formula, it's not going to go backwards, the animation is not gonna go back, it's gonna reset whenever we cut the switch off. For the action, complex animation. For the ease, let's set it to straight. For the animator, here's what we're gonna do. We want it to rotate out, and it's only going to rotate 180 degrees. We don't want it to do a complete rotation. You'll see why right here in a second. So for this first animation, at 40%, I want this shape to have rotated 180 degrees. This is going to expose that white half circle ring into the clipped region. That's all I'm gonna do for right now with that. Let's test it out. It's doing it. Now, if I press this thing again to cut it off, it's going to reset everything so it does not go back. Now I'm gonna go back into the animator. At 80%, here's what I want to happen. I want this thing to get a little bit bigger and I want it to start fading out. But at 80%, I don't want anything to happen until I hit the 80% mark. Now, since I picked 40% to rotate 180 degrees, we're gonna create another half circle slice right here in a minute. But for this one, I'm gonna let the other half circle slice, I'm gonna let it do another 40%. So we have 20% left over. At 80%, I want some things to begin to change, but I don't want them to change until I hit 80%. I want it to get a little bit bigger and I want it to fade out. But at 80%, I don't want it to start happening until we hit 80%. So therefore we need to tell our animator at 80%, the scale is still one. 
also at 80 percent we want the transparency to be zero percent so you're going to be able to see that thing completely but at hundred percent we want the scale xy to be 1.1 basically this circular ring is going to grow by 10 percent 1.1 but also as it's growing, I want the transparency from 80 to 100% to go from completely non-transparent to 100% transparent at the 100% mark. So let's test all this out. Make sure you got all these numbers in here. All right, so you saw it. You saw it pause, right? Well, there's a reason why it paused in there. Let's look at that one more time. It rotates in, pause, then it's scaling. Once we add the other half into this picture, it's gonna look better. Let's take that circle slice, copy and paste it. All right, now we can see it again because it's not getting clipped because this right clip is only clipping the very next module. So we can definitely see this one. I want this one to be over on the right hand side. So I'm gonna go to rotation, set it equal to none. So it's putting it over here. And basically what I want to happen is, is once that first one rotates out, I want this one to start rotating from down here and go 180 degrees completing the whole circle. So for that shape you see here, let's go to its animation. We have copied and pasted this, but we have to change some things in our animator. I don't want this one to start rotating until the first one completely finishes. Therefore, at 40%, I want the rotate to be zero. For the first 40%, I don't want it to rotate at all. I have to tell the animator that. And then by the time we hit 80%, from 40% to 80%, so I'm gonna come in here and add another 80%, from 40% to 80%, this is where we want the 180 degree rotation to occur and everything else should be good here. I still want it to start growing from 80% to 100% and I also want the transparency to fade out from 80 to 100% as well. Now to hide this thing, let's take our right clip, copy and paste, call it left clip, take the left clip, change its position instead of being on the right side of the screen, let's make this a negative 300 to move it to the left. And now nothing's really changed because we have to actually take this left clip and slide it above that circle slice and it should disappear now. Now notice when we do this, we do see two vertical lines right there. So I'm gonna save that, go back to the home screen and we don't see it on the home screen. Sometimes you will see it in the advanced editor but you will not see it on the home screen. And let's see how the animation looks. First half, second half, and it looks like one seamless transition. But we actually have two circle slices. One's rotating in. Once that one's done rotating in, the other piece rotates in into these clipped areas that we've set up. And then once the whole circle completes, it grows a little bit and it fades out at the same time. Now that animation is a bit choppy, but what you can do is you can go in there and you can adjust the rate at which it's fading. You can play around with those percentages some. But I wanted to give you the basic idea of how to draw that circular ring. And the secret is we're using really two circle slices to achieve this. Now, again, pick up that free preset, dive into all the durations, the globals, all the different codes I have for the things that get animated there. But this is just the basic idea of getting one of those rings to work. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.